welcome to ETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. The present topic which we are going to discuss is bradycardia in emergency department. So first of all, definition of bradycardia. Any rhythm disorder with a heart rate less than 60 is called as bradycardia. Now, what is the cause of bradycardia? Bradycardia results from conditions that affect the automaticity and the refractiveness of the cardiac cells as well as the conduction of impulses within the cardiac electrical system. Now, you need to know why this bradycardia is happening. 80% of the whole bradycardia or bradydysrhythmias are caused by factors which is external to the cardiac electrical system, which could be, uh, which could be drug induced, which could be hypoxia with cardiac hyperperfusion, and which could be intrinsic factors like acute coronary syndrome. Now, you need to know when to intervene when there is a bradycardia. The emergency treatment of bradydysrhythmias are required only when the heart rate is less than 60 or 50 when it's associated with hyperperfusion or hypotension. Now, when there is bradydysrhythmia, which is due to structural disease of the heart, in case of uh, infranodal conduction system deficits, you can intervene. Now, we broadly classify bradycardia in two things. One is bradyarrhythmias, which is just heart rate is less than 60, and symptomatic bradycardia. Now, we are coming to what is symptomatic bradycardia when the heart rate is low and the patient has symptoms. What are the symptoms? We'll explain in the coming manner. And when there are signs of symptoms, which is due to low heart rate. Now, there is a um, there is a ECG which I am going to describe. What exactly is bradycardia? Is. Now, this is the ECG which is classifying the bradycardia. We have a heart rate of like around 55 to 60 beats per minute, which is strictly like falls on the bradycardia rhythm. It's a normal sinus rhythm which is having bradycardia. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of bradycardia? Symptomatic bradycardia. Now, what are the main signs? Are chest pain or chest discomfort, shortness of breath, decreased level of consciousness, weakness or fatigueness lightheadedness, dizziness, pre-syncope or syncope. Now there are signs like hypotension, orthostatic hypotension, diaphoresis, pulmonary congestion, signs of heart failure, bradycardia related to PVCs or ventricular tachycardia, so bradycardia related to ventricular ectopics. Now there are causes of bradycardia which have intrinsic cause and extrinsic cause. Now first of all there is physiological cause which is predominantly in the athletes. Now, there are some like something called as intrinsic cardiac cause called as idiopathic degeneration. We have myocardial ischemia and infarction. We have congenital heart disease, sick sinus syndrome, etc. And there are some infections called as like endocarditis, infective endocarditis. And there is something called a situational vasovagal syncope, which is more of automatic, autonomic mediated, or cardiac sinus hypersensitivity, or cough or micturition syncope is also there. Now, we have certain systemic illness like hypothyroidism, hypothermia sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, which all results in bradycardia. We have traumatic cause like head injury, which is resulting in Cushing's response, which is causing bradycardia. And certain dyselectrolemia is called as a hyperkalemia and hypokalemia. And other than that, we have a <clears throat> lot of drugs which can cause bradycardia in the form of AV block, AV node blocking agents like beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, cardiac glycosides like digoxin, any sort of antipsychotic agents like antipsychotic agents like lithium or amitriptyline, antihypertensive agents like clonidin or antiarrhythmias like quinidine. Apart from this, what AHA services, we have 5H and 5Ts which is also causing bradycardia. 5Hs which include hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogenates in the form of acidosis, hypo, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia and hypothermia. The 5Ts which includes are tension pneumothorax, tamponade, toxins, thrombos of the pulmonary blood vessels, thrombos of the cardiac blood vessels. So this leads to the, we have an algorithm for bradycardia widely. So when the emergency, when the patient comes to the emergency department, we have to see, we have to assess how the patient looks like. So first of all, what we are trying to do is you have to identify what is the cause and then we have to intervene accordingly. So the first time when the patient comes to the ER is, you have to maintain a proper ABC, that means airway breathing and circulation. And apart from that, we have to go for an ECG monitoring. And in, when there is an intervention to be done, we have to act accordingly. So suppose we have to give some drugs. The first and foremost thing is you have to gain an IV access. Now how do you gain an IV access? We have to go for large bore IV candles, preferably two in number in both the upper limbs. And then we have to take an ECG. And definitely before that we have to go for, if the, we have to see whether the airway is patent, breathing and circulation based. Now we have to look for signs of unstable bradycardia or symptomatic bradycardia in the form of either unresponsiveness, hypotension, any sort of chest discomfort, any sort of uh, uh, ischemic chest discomfort, or uh, acute heart failure signs. So when there is symptomatic bradycardia, what we are going to dry is like we have to go for the intervention in the form of drugs. So what drug we are using is atropine. 
Now atropin, the dose is 0.5 mg IV stat followed the maximum which can be given as 3 mg. And the second line drug which AHA is prescribed is dopamine. Now dopamine cannot be given in, can be given only in the form of IV infusion. Now what's the dose is 2 to 20 max microgram per kg per minute. And the third drug what they are giving is epinephrine. Epinephrine is also 2 to 10 microgram per kg per minute. Suppose you give the drug, patient is responding, well and good. Now if the patient is not responding, what the next plan is, you have to go for pacing. Now we have pacing, like two types of pacing is there. So we have transcutaneous pacing and transvenous pacing. For transvenous pacing, what we require is cardiology consultation. That's a higher end consultation is required. Now transcutaneous pacing can be done in the emergency department. So summarizing the, the entire concept, you have to identify bradycardia, the primary assessment in the form of you maintain a patent airway, you assess the breathing by keeping an oxygen mask, you monitor BP and heart rate, and you take a good history, which is revealing a, what is a, well, you take a basic focus history and physical examination, and you look for any signs and symptoms of bradycardia, whether symptomatic bradycardia or asymptomatic bradycardia, and then you decide whether there is perfusion is there or hyperperfusion is there. If hyperperfusion is there, you go for atropin, and if atropin is ineffective, you go for transcutaneous spacing, and then finally you plan for transvenous spacing if transcutaneous spacing have failed. Thank you. Subscribe to ATCM Emergency Medicine on YouTube. Press the bell icon to follow us.